was supposed to book a hotel or had a whole crew with me. Tell me why I booked it in an entirely different state. Welcome to the Low Down with D-Low, guys. This is part two of just like story time i was just sharing in the first video a little snippet of my new york story i kind of want to go into my career journey this is probably the number one question i get in my dms how do you travel how do you create videos how are you an on-camera host a lot of people reaching out to me are young black women we're not represented in media we need to get more faces out there more of our voices heard so i would love to just pass along any tips i learned if you guys can also pass along tips to me let's make a community here i'm so so humbled by the fact that a lot of you reach out and just love what I do and love my work. It's just very, very humbling. I've been talking as if I got 1 million subscribers, but child, I only got, girl, I don't know how much I got right now. I will always treat it like I made it because every given moment that we're given is a blessing. Every day is a blessing. Just make sure that you're thankful because we're not promised or guaranteed each day. So be grateful. So I will act as if I have a million subscribers. So thank you all. And guess what? I'm gonna be still the same bitch when I do. So please like, please subscribe. Share to your mama, your auntie, your grandma, that annoying uncle that picks his nose at family gathering. Let's get into it. You heard a little bit of my New York story. Let's fast forward. I came here for an internship with the Jackie Robinson Foundation. Shout out to them. I met this amazing person. His name is Ryan. And and he was like, do you know what now this is? And I remember just being like, no, what is now this? I work there. I would be more than happy to bring you in and just have you check out the space and see and connect you with people. What? So it was like my first like big girl introduction and interview slash I had no idea what I was doing. It's funny because a lot of you guys are gonna be watching this video and you're like, well, I know now this. I'm telling you, I was there for a lot of its beginnings. When I walked in, it was a bunch of young ass people in one room it was so small so small but mighty it was really that new york grind you were there in the office first thing 8 9 a.m and you didn't leave that office till like after 7 8 p.m actually one time i had to clean the studio girl i did not leave that office until 12. i had no production experience i can't emphasize that enough i literally did not know what a dp was i did not know what that stood for i couldn't tell you what a gaffer i couldn't tell you any role i couldn't tell you any role in the production staff i couldn't tell you how to produce all i knew is that i love to make videos in college at ucla i was part of a great comedy group sketch group called company i would do funny parodies and videos that was the extent of like my production knowledge again i was really just writing the scripts and like being in front of the camera i wasn't behind so i never really had like actual on set experience I was just trying to put my best foot forward and I find out a week or two later that I got a job, I got a job, I got a job as a production assistant for a very young team. It was a branded content team for Now This. The branded content had like they like now this was just building its name editorially. And if you guys don't know what branded content means, branded content means basically any content that's partnered with an outside company, a commercial. Fitted and formatted in the style, voice and style of that editorial company. Everyone was still learning. I had three bosses, love them all, and they're still my bosses today. So I was actually thrown in the deep end. And mind you, when I was a PA, PA is production assistant. You are just the helper of everyone. Getting coffee, writing script notes, being a sit-in in the background, buying random props for the shoot. Everyone's yes man. That is what you are. Do everything and say yes to everyone. That's what I did. You have to be humble. I was 22. I was really new to this stuff. I just wanted to learn. So I did. I grinded. I grinded. But because our company was so small, they needed all the hands that they can get. We actually got our first big branded content deal and it was with a major brand. It it was across three different states in multiple cities legit now this had never done a branded content travel production before this i was the inaugural producer for that i was told you know this is what we're doing this is the content we're trying to pitch jalapo you figure out how we do it so i was booking hotels finding locations booking talent calling talent i had to get scrappy because it was across three different states i had to find the most randomest people to tell the story i was literally dming strangers to like film them. It was so fun. It was so great. We traveled across the country together because I was line producing 
this entire shoot and series, I got elevated from PA to AP, which is an associate producer, very quickly. They found that I really got into it. Of course I made mistakes. There was one shoot we were straight up in Texas. I was supposed to book in a hotel in this one city. Multiple cities share the same name, but I had thought I booked it in the state that we were in. Tell me why I booked it in an entirely different state. So we had no hotel reservation. Mind you, I had a whole crew with me. I remember just calling them in the car, being like, um, okay, can we figure out a reservation? Please tell me you guys have availability. So I really got to build my experience very, very quickly. I was a production assistant for only two months, maybe a month and a half. And then I was put into the job of an associate producer. I was doing that very quickly and learning so much. Fast forward, our team starts getting bigger. We start recruiting more people. Now having a bigger sales force, we start selling more campaigns. I start getting more and more producer credit. Napkin brands, food brands, a gamut of whatever. Content was always changing. The storylines were always changing. The places we were going always were changing. It's funny because remember I told you I moved over five times before my first year. So mind you, I was traveling all around the country also in that mess. I honestly accelerated to a producer role very quickly. So I was leading projects more. And then also our team was growing. We also merged with all these different media companies to make one media conglomerate called Group 9. Dabbled in some directing, still learning the ropes, of course. I learned on the job I learned how to book production book crew book talent figure out logistics and everything but then I also started to learn how to creatively map it so let's say we wanted to film this story about young innovators in New York City and it's with this like popping brand I had to figure out how we were going to tell that story how we were going to film it what would the storyline be who are we interviewing where are we interviewing how are we interviewing them what kind of b-roll shots do I want and b-roll is just basically nice beautiful um, filler shots in between between people talking. I was working with DPs, director of photography. What gear do we need? How can we stay within budget? So I started leading, leading more. And I was a producer for a good two years. And then I realized that the big hole in me was that I still love to host. I just remember telling my boss that like, I love producing, I love being on the field, but I also love being in front of the camera. So if we can start pitching me for shows and like pitching me for series, I'm all about it because this is what I love to do. So they're like, bet. I advocated for myself. I advocated for my goals. I advocated for my dreams. And they said, okay, let's make it happen. I was pitched to a bunch of different series. I got a lot of series. And with those series comes amazing perks. I was able to also produce but also be in front of the camera which is also what I love. I have multiple loves. I like to say I'm multifaceted in terms of how I tell stories. I've worked with Kevin Hart, Brian Cranston. I have directed Amanda Seals to Jackie Chan. Let me tell you meeting Jackie Chan was the highlight of my entire life. I am the biggest Rush Hour 2 fan and I know it sounds weird. I'm a Rush Hour fan. I love all of them but Rush Hour 2 it's different. He's so nice. He's also so energetic. It's crazy. Man is 60 something now. Ain't you tired, Miss Hilly? Like, I am literally lost. So I've actually still stayed with the same company and I've been able to produce and create and I've obviously grown more into the company, um, into senior positions and leadership titles and just like being able to just really forecast and figure out what is the next step of what I want to do. The book is still open. I'm still learning. I'm still trying to create. I'm trying to create things on my own. And that's why the lowdown came. I'm so happy that I've been able to use my skills and use my knowledge that I've gained in the field and create it for my own shit. I guess my rule of thumb for people who are wanting to do this, don't think you can skip the line. I think a lot of times people think they can just skip. They're like, I just want to do this. It's like, nah, you got to learn the ropes. You got to learn the ropes. You gotta figure out like what your end game is and how you wanna do it because you can't be doing shaba shaba, you can't be doing yaka yaka. You got to be serious. I want to waste my time. You gotta be serious with everything. I'll do more tips like this, but that's a little bit about my career journey and how I've advocated for myself in space. As a black creative, I find myself constantly being in spaces where I'm the only one. I am second guessed all the time. I get imposter syndrome constantly undermined in terms of my leadership position forgotten or looked down or upon because of just my color of my skin and being a woman and it's just the reality i've been the director on shoots and come on to set and people look at me and like are you here for catering all right go in the back and bring the food over here and i'm like sis i hired you Get out of here, yeah, here. Yeah. I wanna continue expanding my portfolio. So it's really fun, I'm young, you know, I'm a 26 year old 
black creative. I've directed major sets and I'm really proud of myself, but there's so many places I wanna go. I just wanna say, continue your life. There's always a journey out there. Not everyone's journey is the same. All you have to do is just try to figure out what you wanna do and stick with your passion. There's not a rule book. There's just a mode of how you do it and how you hustle. And that's about it. All right, guys, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. Child, I'm a creative. We sensitive. So when y'all don't be watching these videos, it makes me sad. Like, please like it. All right? Oh my God. It's like, oh, no, okay, whatever. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Bye, y'all. How else am I supposed to tell you that I want you to like my videos? And how else am I supposed to tell you that I want you to subscribe? Like, just do it.